A decade ago, it was fairly easy to tell video from cinema. Video was low resolution, cinema was high res. Video played at 50 or 60 interlaced frames per second, but cinema was projected at 24 progressive frames. Video cameras had small sensors and apertures, keeping everything in focus, while 35mm film and bright lenses gave cinema a much shallower depth of field, blurry backgrounds. Video had low dynamic range, and cinema could retain information in both highlights and shadows. With modern DSLR and mirrorless cameras, all these differences have become almost imperceptible. But we haven't mentioned a crucial setting yet, shutter speed. These shots are in high resolution, played at 25p, recorded on a large sensor, wide aperture, and high dynamic range. But that's not how movement looks in cinema, is it? Where's the motion blur? Even our eyes see motion blur. This is what movement should look like. We added motion blur digitally, but that is not possible or advisable in many cases. You need to use 180 degree shutter speeds, that is, double the frame rate and remove light. But you should do so without dramatically changing your aperture. Until recently, we used to stack up ND filters in front of our lenses, or we would use a lens adapter with a built-in variable ND. Both these techniques have side effects. Some ND filters create a color cast or a loss in sharpness and vignetting. Variable ones, in addition, use aggressive polarization. We are lucky enough to have been sent pre-production units of Polar Pro's quartz line filters. They promise zero color shift and outstanding light transmission. So we've put them to the test. Color test. Sharpness test. Vignetting test. With strong ND filters such as ND1000, you can even follow the 180 degree shutter rule on time lapses and experiment in extreme lighting situations. Some of the filters include a polarizing coating that allows you to reduce reflections and darken the sky. Our verdict? Playing with low-end filters is fun and can get you quite far. It is actually really useful for learning, but we do not settle for that. What you put between your subject and your sensor determines the quality of your footage, and we aim for the best possible footage. The quartz line provided excellent color accuracy, and the ND1000 is surprisingly sharp for such a dense filter. Their build quality also gives us confidence in our gear, so we will definitely use Polar Pro's filters from now on. That said, is following cinematic rules all that counts? Not at all. Knowing them is as important as realizing when to break them for creative effect. Revolutionary artists first learn the classics, then reimagine the world. Get out there now and shoot.